Welcome to Families in Faith. This week we will conclude the look into popular stories from children's Bibles and Sunday school lessons. We went from creation to the Exodus. Today we will look a little closer at the Passover story. We will come back next summer to expanding some of these stories, giving further insight and connections. Next week, we will look at doing backpack lessons with your children as they prepare to head back to school. And then we will spend a few weeks looking at biblical eras and what stories connect to those time periods from the judges and kings to the time between the Old Testament and the New Testament. On to the Passover as found in Exodus chapter 12. The Passover was the culminating event that freed the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. It becomes a day to celebrate as a festival. It was during this celebration that Jesus had his last supper with his disciples and institutes Holy Communion. So we look at the story of the Passover through the understanding that this leads to a lasting festival where Jesus would institute Holy Communion and place himself in the story. We begin after the plagues have been inflicting Egypt for weeks. Every time God sends a plague, Pharaoh releases the Israelites to make it stop. Then. God changes Pharaoh's heart and mind. It seems at first glance that God is working against himself, but looking at it through the New Testament lens, we see that God was leading up to the Passover event. The plague side of the Passover is the death of the firstborn male in every household that does not have the blood of the lamb painted on the doorframe, but it's the meal and the Passover lamb that become significant. It starts by telling the Israelites to select a lamb and then bring it into their homes for a few days. For people who own flocks, this is significant. The livestock live outside and are used for food and sacrifice. They are not pets. What do you think happened during those four days living together with the sheep? Perhaps they became like family pets, making the sacrifice a little more significant. Then, on the night of the Passover, families were to have a special meal, eaten in haste. In our culture, this is commonplace. We eat too many meals in haste. In fact, there's a whole market of meals eaten in haste. We call it fast food. Bread made without yeast was part of this haste. It's much faster to make bread without waiting for it to rise. The blood from the Passover lamb was to be painted on the door frames of your house. This would tell the angel of the Lord to pass over your house. It was this Passover lamb that would not only save the life of the firstborn male, but also save the entire community of Israel from slavery. Jesus is often referred to as the Lamb of God. It is his blood that saves us from death and frees us from the slavery of sin. We connect to his death and resurrection through Holy Communion. When we eat bread made without yeast, which is his body, and we drink wine, which is his blood. This sacramental union of bread and body, blood and wine, is the work of the Holy Spirit connecting us with Christ. The Passover is a great example of how the stories from the Old Testament connect with the New Testament and connect with our lives today. Jesus' blood saves. Help your children not only understand this truth, but understand how it connects to the entire Bible the story of God.